Uh, I work in two primary buckets. Um, because I come from the university recruiting space, mm -hmm. um, I have a lot of folks that are just graduating, um, either from undergrad or just getting a master's in MBA and really need to recalibrate and uh, wrap their arms around, you know, what their next steps are, what are their options, what is out there for them. And sometimes, you know, with limited scope, you feel like, hey, I'm coming out of this degree. These are the only opportunities that are available to me. And that's, you know, in reality, just not the case. And so um, I work with a lot of new graduates who, you know, haven't gone through a lot of extensive interview processes, who are not familiar with how to negotiate a salary, um, what types of conversations they may need to be having with their new manager or their teams in order to keep a focus on their personal development, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, you have a manager and they're there to manage you. They're there to give you instruction. Um, and they are there to support you from a personal and professional development standpoint. But at the end of the day, it doesn't solely lie on your manager. There needs to be some personal accountability there. And so I have a lot of conversations with my new grad folks uh, in terms of that. And then I also have my mid-career, mostly women, but I, I do service um, some men. And um, they're, they're folks that are, they've done well from the for themselves. They've been successful. They've seen strides in their careers, uh, but they're really looking to pivot. They're really looking mm -hmm. to translate. And sometimes that means, you know, just giving themselves permission to explore other things uh, because, you know, you get to mid-career and now you have, you know, family, you have spouses, those types of things, more responsibility that um, you have to kind of navigate around. Mm -hmm. And so I have a lot of conversations around, you know, giving yourself permission to do that, giving yourself permission to, you know, make the shift, make the change, explore something new. Sometimes that means taking a step back, uh, which sometimes people are uncomfortable with, especially if they have spent so much of their time, you know, trying to get to certain benchmarks or milestones in their careers. And they're not sure how, how to do that. And so, um, being able to talk about their experience in their previous career and how to translate that uh, to apples to apples instead yeah. of apples to oranges, you know, and uh, going through the process of, you know, interviewing and exploring a new industry and making sure that they're able to show up as their, their best selves um, and be confident in those conversations. Um, and then I also, you know, I, I say that I focus on the, the minutia, right? Lots of people set goals. They have clarity in terms of what they want. Uh, but if you're not focusing on some of those smaller details, you'll find yourself frustrated in, you know, why the progress is not there that you want. So things like procrastination. I mm -hmm. spent a lot of time talking about procrastination and how you work through what those procrastination challenges are. And sometimes people don't even realize, oh, I didn't know that that was a part of procrastination. And so it's, you know, sometimes just small things that you can change. Mm -hmm. um, personal accountability, imposter syndrome negative self-talk. We talked about the mindset piece. Um, so those are the conversations that I have a lot of the times with my mid-career folks. So you know what? We were talking about imposter syndrome. Can you, so how do you define it? Because is, is it basically, are you, you're, you're someone else in the office and you're somewhere outside of the office? Because I often get it confused a little bit. Yeah. Um, so the easiest way to explain imposter syndrome is, you know, you work hard, you have talents, you are qualified, but because of the narrative that you tell yourself, you discount that. Mm. Oh, I'm only being promoted because they want a woman. Or, oh, you know, the person that they really wanted for this role wasn't available, so that's why I'm in this position now. And so it is, you know, this fear that I'm not actually supposed to be where I am. I actually don't deserve, you know, the opportunities or the position that I'm in because I'm not supposed to be here. And so you have this fear in the back of your head, like, I'm going to be found out as this fraud, as this imposter, and this, you know, opportunity is going to be taken away from me. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. 